welcome to another edition of Lab Rats, your absolute favorite tech podcast. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. It's my favorite tech podcast. It's my favorite tech podcast. Should be yours too. All right. Today on the show, uh, well, we're going to sort of touch on a new Windows Vista quirk, but I think it applies to the Mac too. Running your system in administrator mode versus standard user mode. That's not a quirk, my friend. That's good standard operating practice. Right. And most lazy geeks out there never do it. But I yeah. did want to t touch on it because it's become increasingly important on Vista. It's easier to do on Vista now. And uh, you can actually do it on the Mac as well. You can. All right. So let's uh, take a break and uh, listen to the fine uh, dulcet uh, tones of a message from our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to teach you all about administrator versus standard user on your computer. <laughs> This is Bongo. He likes bananas. This is a banana peel. It is a slippery hazard. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It is simple to use. Now answer our trivia question. What screen recording software does not swing from trees or make you slip? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. You're around the edges today, aren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, you poor thing. Don't push me today, Walker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... All right. <laughs> yes, it's one, one of those episodes. Well, and we fly we... back and well, see, we should fly back and forth for this, right? Sean lives in Vancouver on the western side of Canada, and mm -hmm. I'm in Toronto on the mm -hmm. cent central side, not the eastern side, as our eastern viewers complain with what I say. Um, mm -hmm. And so, of course, it's a little, a little jet laggy today. Yeah, it's just sort of hitting me today. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, we're going to cheer you up with a, a topic about administrator versus standard user functionality on your computer. Awesome. Aren't you going to be rejuvenated by that? I'm feeling the energy coursing through me right now. Good. All right. So on any computer, Mac or PC, you can you create a user account, right? It's the account that you use to keep all your, your stuff on your desktop and all your personal data and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, you can set it up in two modes, either administrator mode, and an administrator is? The person that runs the machine. The person that runs the machine, the big boss, head right. geek. If you're a Unix person, that would be a root, essentially. A root. You are the root user. Right, so you can control everything, you can install stuff, you can fix stuff, you can break stuff too, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in the Windows world and also in the Mac world. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the first uh, account that you create when you first stop, uh, start up your Windows XP machine or your Windows Vista machine is indeed the administrator account. And that That's allows you to make all kinds of changes. So you can install software, as I said. Mm -hmm. You can you know, go in and edit things like the registry. You can clean out viruses. You can uh, make all kinds of repairs. You can optimize the system and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. you, have, you are God on your system. Yes, now the big mistake that most people make is they create that account and they do all their setup and then they continue to run in that account. In administrator mode, and, like me. Uh, like you. And, mm -hmm. and you know what, this is not exactly anybody's fault. No. Uh, it is something that Microsoft has actually sort of trained us to do in a way because uh, up to Windows 98, you didn't have the choice. It was, you are the user, that's yeah, it. Right. No uh, user account control worth speaking of besides networking capabilities. Right. Now, when they went to Windows XP, they took a page from the uh, NT side of the equation, which did use user accounts and administrators and, and more limited users. Mm -hmm. But they made it so difficult for people that wanted to run as a standard limited user to do anything whatsoever that people just said, you know what, to heck with this, I'm just going to run as the administrator because I don't need something telling me I can't do something every five seconds. Right. But they kind of fixed it in, in Windows Vista. So they they've actually upgraded uh, the sort of usability of a standard user mode. Mm -hmm. So now you can really you know, function on a day-to-day -day basis in standard user mode, but you can't touch anything outside of, the, of your own little personal space on the system. Uh, you can't install software with, without uh, permissions, mm -hmm. and you really can't make any fundamental changes. Now this is great if you have uh, children uh, or teenagers or users on, that use your computer that like to tinker a fair amount. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is set up yourself as an administrator, set up your own standard user account so that you can use that as well in a safe environment and everybody else who's on the system. Mm -hmm. 
you can set them up as standard users as well. And one good application for this for certain businesses, say you're running a laundromat and you want to set up a public internet terminal so that people can tinker with it mm. while they're doing their laundry, um, you don't want them installing you know, bad software on there and viruses and all of that sort of stuff. So you want to make them a limited user for sure. Even if you stay as administrator on your own machine, not recommended, but a lot of people do it anyways, make sure that they don't have access to that same thing. So let's get into uh, Windows Vista here, and I'll show you how to, uh, to sort of set up a standard user for, for example, your children. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the Windows button, and I'm going to type user. So are you in uh, administrator mode right now? I am already in administrator mode right now. Oh, so I've, you're I've a bad man. You shouldn't in. be running in this. No, I know I shouldn't, but most people who know the way around the system, it drives them crazy. <laughs> it's true. I mean, tell me, so do you run in standard user mode? No. No. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click on user accounts. You have to be in administrator mode to do this. And I'm going to say manage another account. Now I've set up an account for Biff. Biff is, of course, one of the cats here. And uh, he's set up with limited permissions on the system. And you don't want Biff installing Biff-style software on the system. It'll right. be really bad. Kibble viruses, things like that. Yes. Okay. All right. So you want to set up not only a use standard user account, but you also want to password protect that so that you know, the other cats can't get into Biff's account. Um, but the nice thing about being an administrator uh, is that you can actually get in and see that data. Um, and you can set up, there's a new feature on Windows Vista called parental controls. So I'm going to click on that, set up parental controls here. Now the nice thing about this is you can kind of monitor what the user is doing. So you can see what websites they've been to. You can set up the limitations around um, you know, when they can use the computer, what kind of uh, programs they can use. Oh, I'm going to... Oh, I've got an alert here. So as you can see, this, there is, uh, I can turn it on and off, of course, to enforce it. Mm -hmm. There's an activity reporting. So I can get a report every time I log in to see what Biff's been up to. Um, I can filter the web. I can ban him from certain websites mm -hmm. and give him time limits. So I can say, you can only use the computer after school for two hours, for example. I can choose uh, the, the game rating and also mm -hmm. which games he can use. Um, and I can allow or, or block specific programs. So, for example, I may not want him to use Norton Utilities, for example, mm -hmm. but uh, you know it's okay if you use Photoshop elements. So uh, for games, let's go back to that uh, really quickly. So if you want uh, Biff to be able to play Bust a Move, for example, which isn't a nice safe game, then you can set it so that he can do that. But uh, Grand Theft Auto, uh, which you, is a little bit more, a little bit uh, adult? too risque for uh, a cat of Biff's age. Right. So yes, so you can control it by the was it the ESRB rating? The ESRB rating, right? Which is a standardized, almost like movie ratings, but mm -hmm. for games. Um, and you can see here, you can set the time limits, game ratings. I can say either he can play games or not. Um, and uh, I can set the game ratings and block or allow specific games, which is really great. Maximum allowed rating. Adults only. Oh, right. you don't want Biff playing those games. <laughs> That's naughty. Um, and you can also set time limits, too, which is kind of handy. So I can say you know, he can use it only on the weekends, for example. Mm -hmm. He can only play games on the weekends. Very useful thing. Okay, so. I've, uh, let's say I've set that up for Biff here. Now I'm going to switch over to, into the Biff mode, into his uh, account. I'm going to go down to the uh, Windows button here, and I'm going to choose um, to switch user. And let's see, I'm gonna flip over into Biff mode. I'm going to click on that, type in his password. What is his password? Kibble. See, don't Actually, give you know, away the password. You know what it should be is Temptations. Temptations. Yeah, it's like cat crack. Mm. <laughs> All right. All right, so now I'm running as Biff here uh, on the desktop. And uh, so let's say Biff is feeling particularly rambunctious and uh, wants to go to uh, do one of those file sharing applications, Kazaa. Ah. Now, Kazaa, of course, and if you have a teenager, you know what Kazaa is, or you may know what it is. It's a. Uh, it be Katza. Katza, <laughs> exactly. Uh, or BearShare, one of those guys. It's file sharing, and it's usually a big source of spyware, viruses, things like that. So Shouldn't that be cat share instead of bear share? Can't share. I'll shut right. up now. Shut up now. All right, good. So I'm going to go to Kazaa here, and I'm going to try to download that file sharing application as Biff. Mm. Uh, now I've set him up as a limited user, right? So he doesn't have permissions to install particular pieces of software. So let's just see if he can load that up. And um, instead of it automatically starting to uh, install the software, it, it actually has an elevation prompt. It says mm -hmm. uh, that a program, this program, Kazaa Installer, needs your permission to continue. Um, so if I'm Biff, I don't necessarily know what the Andy administrator password mm -hmm. is. Now, he'd call me over and say, hey, can, you, uh, can I have permission to, to use this, Dad? And then you can uh, then give your password, type it in for, for him, and allow him to do that. And this mm -hmm. is one of the ma major improvements of Windows mm -hmm. XP, is that you couldn't really do this before. You had to go and get the administrator to install the program system-wide 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, in order for them to use it. So yeah. this is drastically improved. Very important not to just type your password in whenever you're asked as well. There's, this is here for a reason. We've talked about uh, dialogue fatigue before on uh, these new security alerts that you see on Windows Vista to the, where you get to the point where you're just going to click OK, 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 OK. So resist the temptation to do that in this mode as well because it is there for a reason. That's right. Now the other nice thing about this, and this will apply to people that have administrative accounts but want to run in a more secure environment as standard users themselves, if you go to a, a system change, like for example, change the date and the time. Oh, you as, love this as an example. As a, I do, it's because it's easy to get to. It's a it's a fundamental system change. And it's absurd. It's also absurd seeming. Oh, well, maybe. There's, there's a good security reason for this that's not obvious right. to most people, but right. it seems absurd. Anyway, so if I click on uh, something that has a shield that has the user account control uh, mechanism to protect you, when I click on that, again, I'm trying to make a change to the system here. Again, I get an elevation prompt. And I can give myself permission if I have the user ID uh, or the password for the administrator in this particular case. So that standard user first administrator uh, on Windows. Now, mm -hmm. on the Mac side of the business. Mac side, you have uh, can you do the, the, same thing? the same sort of thing, yeah. So you uh, set up, uh, obviously, uh, when you set up the machine as an administrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can set up guest accounts on the machine that have limited functionality. Right. And again, the same sort of thing is you can't just install software. Uh, when you're one of the limited users, and uh, you would have to have ask the, permission. you have to ask permission to get that done or install it from the administrator account. Right. What you don't want is somebody to come along and make any changes other other on your Mac or your PC. Right. So let's take a break, and when we come back, I think we have some pictures. Do we? Of uh, viewers this week, or do oh, we not? God, I hope so. I hope so. All right. Well, we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we asked you what screen recording software does not swing from trees or make you slip. Is it A, Bongo the Chimp, B, a Banana Peel, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. The noise you hear right now is Steve Huntress, who, for a change, is not drinking our beer. He's just making it's rude just, noises it's in the being background. Disruptive. Yes. Oh well. So uh, pictures. Right. You right. done? You done over there? Yeah. Okay. Three. So we do. No, we're, we're rolling already, Gary. He's like <laughs> three, two. So yes. what happens when you, you know, hire amateurs? Yeah, no, we we took too big a break there. I think. Mm. That's not what happens when we are amateurs. Yes. Okay. Guilty. We've got photos, though, oh, good. to make up for all right. of this silliness and nonsense. Ah, lovely. And unfortunately, the photographs are of more silliness and nonsense. Okay, so tell us. Pictures right. of, of actual viewers this time? No. We no? Keep, we keep asking for actual viewers, and you know what? They keep sending us everything but. Pict pictures of what? Of They're what? sending us their frogs, their dogs, their goats, their sheep, their hamsters, their dingoes, their, their wallabies, toilets. all that. You like all those little Australian things I threw in there, Steve? Yeah, that's right. All right. So, uh, so, so now what? Now what? So first of all, we should say, send us pictures of your dingoes. Maybe you'll actually get some photographs of them. You think? Yeah, that's true. Don't send us Maybe pictures of you. Send us pictures of your favorite pair of slippers. Or, or your like favorite beer stein. That's right. Okay. Anyways, uh, so our viewer Kevin. Yes. Yeah. Sent. We don't us have a picture of Kevin. Right? We don't have a picture of Kevin. Yeah. We would like a picture of Kevin, but yeah. Kevin sent us a picture, uh, not his dog. No. but his mom's dog. <laughs> so, so we're getting sort of even further. <laughs> so Kevin, thank you for taking us even further away from the original spirit of this. But they are great pictures. Oh, they good? So, All right. here we go. His mom's dog. <laughs> no. Wearing a tutu. Oh, the indignity of so, it all. Yeah, there's the one. And in case that one photograph was not bad enough, we've got more. Oh, it says princess on the it back. It says princess. And oh, my god. There it's you a, go. The poor beetle. How sad. Just doesn't, I'm assuming it's a well, princess. He said that the dog was happy. Well, how can you not be happy in a tutu that says princess? I guess so. I, I can't yeah. say that I'd be particularly happy in a tutu that said princess. Me neither. No. 
All right. Anyways, keep the photographs coming. Yeah, Remember, send us pictures of your slippers and your beer steins. That's right. And your couch. Not you. Don't send pictures of you. Tables. We don't want to see you. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Send with feedback at libraries.tv. That's right. All right. I suppose that's it. Uh, I would encourage you. Anything else to add? No. All right. No, I'm done being crispy now. Good. Uh, I would encourage you, if you are seeing us we, uh, on one of the many services that host our files and you don't actually come to us at labrest.tv, you get it from Google Video or from How Stuff Works or someplace like that, feel free to come visit us at labrest.tv. We mm -hmm. have uh, an entire archive of all of our shows. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, you know, done, I won't say how many because, of course, I'm not sure what episode number this is, but dozens. Uh, as we take this, I think it's number 92. That okay. could, of course, change. Right. So approaching 100 episodes. It's, it's so weird come, come on over to labrest.tv and uh, see what else we've done and see how far we've come and, and uh, what we've yeah. covered. And see all the, the lovely design around the edges by Steve Huntress, who was making noises earlier. Right. Uh, that's it. That's Any it. shameless plugs? Um, 365 days of lab rat. 365 days of lab rat. We haven't. Uh, we don't have a photograph of that uh, ready to go right now. But that's uh, Betsy Weber's uh, new Flickr photo set. Mm -hmm. uh, she's taking this one of these lab rats around the world with her uh -huh. as she goes to various places for tech conferences, and she's taking pictures of the lab rat doing things like being headed, being beheaded. Uh, actually having its arms taken off. Right. And various other things. So 365 right. days of Lab Rat. There you go. Check that out. All right. Well, thank you for downloading today. Uh, he's Sean Crothers. He's Andy Walker. We'll see you next time. Woo! Woo! Are you ready? <laughs>